five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. Live from the Pro Wrestling Report Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this is Monday Night Meltdown with your hosts, Damian Nelson and David Hero. I'm proud to say we're doing things the Vince McMahon way. That's the bottom line. What? Cusco, Goat, Cusco. Bringing you all the latest news and views from professional wrestling, Monday Night Meltdown is on the air. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Monday Night Meltdown for Monday, June 4, 2012. Damian Nelson Company here with David Hero and uh, Matthew Thomas. Uh, David, Matt, here's the thing. I don't even want to do this tonight. That was brutal. I'm sorry. Let's just get right to it. That was like the, <laughs> the, 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 the rated G version of Raw. It's like they did a Raw tonight for all the children's out there. And sweet baby Jesus, that hurt my everything. The, they're, 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 I can't even think of much good aside from John Laurinaitis actually being entertaining tonight, Dolph Ziggler getting a championship matchup, Daniel Bryan with a, taking yes to the level of what, um, more so than it has been in the past. Oh, I, I can't. I can't. And now we get a three-hour Raw next Monday. I'm happy Daddy's coming home. But sweet God, that – that hurt. And I try, I try, I try, I try, I try to find the silver lining, the shining light, the, the, thinking that the glass of Jameson is still half full. But in this case, I'm sitting at the bar. They got no more Jameson back there, and it's nowhere near closing time. I don't know what to do. That's how bad I think this show was tonight. You know what, it it was, I mean, it was hard to watch. It was hard to get into it. And, you know, I'm sitting here, and it's like, okay, you don't have a Randy Orton. You don't have a Chris Jericho. There's no Big Show. There's no Brock Lesnar. There's no Triple H. Uh, there's no Cody Rhodes. There's no Miz, and there's no Zack Ryder. So what do you do? You build the show around your announcer, Michael Cole. They had an opportunity to elevate somebody else, to make somebody else a little more relevant, and they didn't do it. They had a chance to make, to to give Tensai, a you know a, a restart or reboot, you know if you wanted to, and they didn't do it. These three hour raws are going to be tough to watch. I don't know how or what they're going to do to keep people interested, especially in the summertime to stay indoors for three hours on a Monday night to watch wrestling. We are definitely seeking your feedback on tonight's WWE Raw. You can do so via Twitter, at PWR Show on Twitter. A comical one just came over from a user named at CMPunkFan89, and I guess that really, well, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm almost bitter tonight. Uh, but I'll read what this person tweeted, and I quote, Are you guys even fans anymore? All you do is bitch and complain nowadays. Raw wasn't that bad tonight. Punk versus Kane was awesome. All I remember about Punk versus Kane was the two commercial breaks during the middle of the matchup. You know what? You're entitled to your opinion. We're entitled to ours. And quite frankly, uh, you can't always find the good amongst a pile of crap. And tonight Raw wow, was just... Wow, Damien, you are, you are something tonight, man. I'm irritated. I just spent two hours for what? What did I walk away with tonight from Raw? What did I walk away with? Yeah, the, It's we, not going to be a home see, run every week. Hey, you know what? It's, did we even see Eve tonight? No. I think there was well, only well, one endorsed talent, and that was Dolph Ziggler. half the roster. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it seems like... Uh, I don't know, where, where was everybody? Very, very. Matthew, you know, maybe Matthew loved this. Tonight. Maybe, 
maybe this was a show done for Matthew. Matthew, is this, uh, I, don't, I don't, please help oh, me here. Help I, me. I wish, I wish that was the case. I'm, I'm searching for the redeeming value right now, and I just, I can't find it. You know, I don't know, I know we just got that tweet, but I'd be very curious to see if anybody in this room or exactly how many people listening would not go as far and say this was the worst Raw of 2012. I thought a few weeks ago with Big Show crying in the rain for 20 minutes was, you know, kind of took the cake there that week. But, man, this was just, this was absolutely brutal. There was nothing, not not one segment done that I can honestly say made me any closer to wanting to press the buy button and order No Way Out. You know, I am a, I am a wrestling fan, and I appreciate... You're a cynic. I'm honest. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> but, you know, here's the thing. If they would have closed the show with Sheamus and Ziggler, or even Punk yeah. versus Kane, you know yeah. what? We might not be so hard on them. But we yep. sat through an hour and 50 minutes, and the payoff was Michael Cole rolling around in underwear in barbecue sauce. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's what it was. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Tell me that's not what the show was built towards. That was what the show was built towards. It's a, and uh, you, know what, you, know what, you know what else drove me nuts? Is if Michael Cole was really going to be in a fight with John Cena, why doesn't he leave the announcer's booth after the match is signed and politic in the back with whoever might listen and bring somebody else out? Let Booker T commentate. Let Josh Matthews make it seem like it's really going to be a real fight. You don't let him sit out there and then expect him to come into the ring cold. And I know it sounds nitpicky and whatever else, but if they want to truly bring the realism or the, the legit back to Monday Night Raw, that's what they should have done. We're getting a lot of your tweets right now again. Uh, again, uh, um, at the WR Show on Twitter. We're all each individually on Twitter as well. You can send us your comments. We're getting a lot of your feedback, including a uh, user by the name of uh, J- at jboonit2007. I don't think Raw was terrible. I love the Daniel Bryan Danielson, CM Punk, and Kane story, Sheamus and Ziggler. It wasn't great, but come on, guys. You know what? All right, fine. Yeah, everybody's always, and, and this, this came from the chat room, and I'm going to quote this, user Dare, uh, Claire Mack. Imagine if TNA done this crap. People would be all over them. Exactly. Absolutely. Bunch of hypocrites. You would be all over Oh, it's crap. Why are they even live? Blah this, blah that. You know what? Let's talk about what happened. And as I said, I'm not expecting a home run every Monday night, but take me to no way out. Get me on my way. Convince me, as you should right now, that three hours of my Monday night during summer is worth tuning into your program for. Convince me of that. These should be some of the most exciting Raws coming in the next few weeks that we've seen all year. Yeah, They've got to convince what? us to, to commit to that extra hour. Look at what the wrestling world is doing to the wrestling fan this summer. They are doing their absolute best to keep people indoors. Three hours of Raw and now live. And they don't want you to leave the house. Right. And you know what? Michael Cole, and I, and I said this out as a tweet earlier, love him or hate him, the guy is a hell of a good sport. For yeah. him to go out there and get stripped down to his underwear, get barbecue sauce all over himself, and get you know doused with a fire extinguisher, you know what? God bless him for cashing that paycheck because he definitely earned it tonight. But you know what I'm going to say? Oh, go ahead. If TNA would have ended their show with Garrett Bischoff versus Eric Bischoff, which is what I consider... Michael Cole versus John Cena, the, the fans would have gone nuts. Now, of course, TNA, they don't have that luxury of where they can afford to make those mistakes. But, right. you know, it, you know, but yeah, TNA would definitely be, uh, it would have been the final nail in their coffin. We want, you know what, I'm going to throw out an open challenge tonight. We're going to enter the phone zone in a little while. I want, I want our callers tonight. Uh-oh. And as we screen our calls, I want our callers tonight. No, nope, no, nope. you know what? If 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 this is an issue, and we're being too critical, 
then show us, prove to us why Raw was great or Raw was well, good or Raw wasn't what, bad. Damien, between you and I, we have over 70 years of wrestling fanism between the two of us. Mm-hmm. Okay? We've watched a lot. We've seen a lot. We are privy to more stuff that goes on in the back than most people would know. And you know what? We're not wrong. I mean, the way we feel is pretty much consistent with the way some of the guys feel in the locker room, some of the guys in the head office, and the creative office, and the live events. Right now, wrestling's in a funk, and I'm not talking about Brodus Clay, just in general. Whereas and there was no Brodus now, tonight either. Well, he, he was beat up, you know? As was Buffy but, Kingston and R-Truth. Right. But right now, both wrestling companies are scratching their heads and and doing anything they can to create buzz. But this way, you know their concern for ratings when they bring back Vinnie Mac. Bring back right? Vinnie Mac, absolutely, yep. Yeah, yep. you know that they're concerned, uh-oh, we've got to get things rolling. Vince McMahon should not be coming back a week or two before No Way Out. He comes back before the Rumble, Survivor Series, SummerSlam, or WrestleMania. Not for any, not for any other pay-per-view but those. You know, and, and Matthew, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because, David, you and I have talked about it off air. The Let's rewind. Let's go back to the future, perhaps. And let's go back to Nitro expanding to three hours. Let's go back to Nitro not being the superior program to WWE Raw on Monday nights, yet Nitro winning every week in the ratings until 1998. Now let's move forward to WWE going to three hours with arguably star power, not enough star power to support that. Let's look at TNA. It's going live through either the end of July or the end of August. Looks like now it's going to be the end of August, which is great. A lot of people saying TNA last week uh, was a good product, and if you compare last week's Live Impact to this week's Live Raw, TNA would get the win in that case. Matthew, do you see, aside from the obvious, do you see similarities to the downfall of WCW, the ultimate downfall of WCW, and the overtaking uh, of WWE Raw in the ratings, do you see any similarities there? I'm not talking about WCW going out of business. There's no chance whatsoever that WWE is going to go out of business. But this, the, the, this could be, as they said on the deadliest catch last week or two weeks ago, this could be the perfect storm. Do you see that, Matthew? Yeah, it's very interesting that both things are taking shape right now at the same time. TNA, I felt, did put together a pretty good initial live broadcast last Thursday night. And WWE, you know, going into the three hours, and that was the thing with Nitro for me. I was always a, a lot bigger of a WWE guy back in those days. And Nitro just, man, it felt so watered down to me, especially during, you know, the era when it was three hours. And WWE going three hours, especially at this time. Now, if you went three hours back in the build-up to WrestleMania or coming off of WrestleMania with the Cena and Brock Lesnar angle, but everything's starting to feel so watered down now at the two-hour mark, you know, it makes you really wonder, if not somewhat dread, that extra hour. So it's very, it's a, there, it's very interesting parallels there especially with, with TNA hopefully trying to kind of hit their stride a little bit now. So it will be, it'll be a very interesting summer. You know what, and that's the fact of the matter. It is going to be a very interesting summer. And I'm, I'm going to watch Raw every week. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be that fan who many of you have heard or seen from. I'm never watching again, blah, 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 blah. But it's another case of, Let's not lose sight of the fact that Greenville, South Carolina, was red hot for John Cena tonight. I think the live audience went home very damn happy tonight. Uh, That energy didn't translate to TV. And I'm sick of people telling Cena or making a – because they're parody. They're they're, they're actually making fun of all of us as wrestling fans who who have said these things about Cena every time they bring him up on TV about how he's boring, same same stuff for the last however many years, blah, 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 blah. Every time they bring that up, they're just getting back at all of us, all of you. Uh, and, and, and quite frankly, most people fall for it each and every week. But I'm getting sick of it. I'm, I'm sick of that. I'm, I'm, 
not yeah, I guess I maybe I am sick of Cena. I don't know. But as soon as here's what where, where, where Raw lost me. As soon as it came on the air and we saw Big Show's face with the sappy music, I was done. I was actually completely done at that point with the show and the two hours that would follow. There wasn't much they could do to get me back. Is it because you're tired of Big Show and or is it because you're hoping for something new to start the show? I uh, we talked about this on Primetime Extra, which is an exclusive available at uh, pwrshow.com right now. It, it, this whole Big Show thing, I'm sorry, it just isn't taking. It just isn't. I, I don't care. I have a lot of respect for the Big Show. He's done a lot in the business. He deserves to be at a main event spot. But I'm, they, they, this has been, what, three, four weeks? It was so obvious the turn. It, 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 it's just I, I, I think I, I feel somewhat insulted as a fan to be expected to look at the Big Show as some monster when he's been a complete joke for the last several years. You know what the problem is? I think we might be a little more into the whole Big Show angle if, once again, WWE would make John Cena look human. I mean, you know, a lot of people say, well, John Cena is the Hulk Hogan of this generation. You know what? You're right. Hogan went through all the top heels. He went through Bundy and Stud and Andre and Killer Khan and Kamala and One Man Gang and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff and, you know, Sergeant Slaughter and Macho Man and all those guys. But do you know what the main difference was? Is leading up to that big match, Hogan was always left laying. There's always that doubt. Wow, are these guys going to finally beat him? You know, Hogan is stretchered out. Oh, you know, and now he's in the hospital, or he was, you know, battered and bruised, or, you know, you know, when Orndorff gave him the big pile driver, or, or, or it was always something. John Cena, nine times out of ten, leaves Monday Night Raw with a big smile on his face. We're out of time with the fire extinguisher. Yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, you know I, what I mean? And, not, and not, not only that, but, you know, the thing with Cena's involvement in any feud, it looks like whatever happens to him when he is left lane, like, you know, a couple of weeks ago when he was knocked out by the big show, he comes back a couple of weeks later and it doesn't phase him. There's no anger there. He opened up the show tonight with... A, a My Little Pony's joke to Michael Cole, you know, he's got to get in his stand-up routine, and it's just there's no believability there in whatever feud he's invested in at the moment. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got several of you who've called in, and guess we haven't even given out the number yet. Um, we're and we we want to we're going to talk to a couple people who. Uh, who think Raw was was good, and uh, we're having some challenges. Me, that's having some challenges finding people who actually thought Raw was good. So, there, <laughs> there, take it. But you know what? Let's go down uh, what actually happened tonight on Raw because we haven't done that. Just to be fair and give it the analysis it deserves. Um, the show opened up with a big Michael Cole hard hitting interview with John Cena, calling him overrated. Uh, John Laurinaitis comes out and, and announces that Cena is going to have a match. He can select the superstar if it's choosing. Can't be Cole. I'm sorry, he can't be Laurinaitis. He selects Cole, which was, again, bl- brutally obvious. But i got to give props to Michael Cole. He did incredibly well in that segment. i got to give props to John Laurinaitis. He did incredibly well in that segment. Um, so it was set up well, but at the same time, after seeing the show start with the big show, I'm like, uh, this is going to be the main event. Maybe somebody's going to come out. Maybe Big Show's actually going to be there. Uh, well, you know, Rick, when I was in, uh, you know, he was within 90 miles of the building I heard. Oh, you know what? I read that all over the Internet today. And I was supposed to believe that, right, just because I read it on the Internet? Absolutely. You know, speaking of which, I've gotten great joy lately out of, and some people are doing it in the chat room tonight, when they uh, prove some type of point with some rumor they read on some sheet that isn't verified or substantiated. It's just it, it, it's 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 very very entertaining to me. Well, Tinsley's a bomb. You know, he's been pulled from TV. He was in the main event tonight. Anyways, uh, Dolph Ziggler. And not, only, and not only was he, was was he in the main event, he did the clean job, and people thought, oh yeah, he's done. He came back and gave a sit down power bomb. Yep. Speaking mm-hmm. of which, have you, did you see the pictures, either of you, of Matt, of uh, Ahmed Johnson from a uh, recent wrestling show? No, I have not. Wow. Yeah, have well, you the, if you saw the pictures, you wouldn't miss him. He's <laughs> wow, he's a big boy. Yeah, yeah. 
Anyway, um, Dolph Ziggler versus Sheamus. Great effort by Ziggler. But you know what I wonder about Dolph Ziggler? Does he bump too much? Does he sell too good? Is that holding him back? Because he just makes whoever he's in the ring with look so much superior to him. Do you know what I've been told why he has been kind of held back? Is they feel he makes everybody look better, which is great, but a lot of the people feel he's too small. That's hard to believe because they've had a lot of, of other, you know, smaller guys with far better runs. But, um, you, you know, it, it's just the, the, the guy has, he can talk, he can work, he can bump, he can, he does it all. He makes he makes his opponents look like rock stars in the ring. And uh, it, it's just a shame that, you know, instead of putting Dolph Ziggler in the main event, they put Michael Cole there. Daddy's coming home next week on Raw. Vince McMahon announced to come back and do a talent evaluation next week on Monday Night Raw. It almost seemed like when John you know first well, mentioned it, it you, seemed like they were teasing the draft. You know what, Damien? How many talent evaluations are they going to have in the last six months? Well, I think the way it's gone over the course of the last eight months is, and, and correct me when I'm wrong, Triple H and the board replaced Vince McMahon John Laurinaitis, Vince McMahon replaced Triple H with John Laurinaitis. Now they're teasing that John Laurinaitis may be replaced by Vince McMahon on Raw Monday night. It's Not quite circular, happen. I think. Not going to happen. <laughs> uh, you know what? One thing's for sure is Vince McMahon equals ratings. There's no doubt about that. And uh, it's always good to see him. And I love how sparingly he's been used lately. I would have. I was expecting though that we wouldn't see Daddy or Vince until the Raw 1000 episode. Um, he's, oh, when, he's like 70 years old. He can't bump in the ring anymore. Well, I'm sure he's, he can. He, he's best when I'll he's be the when antagonist. I'm well, not in the ring, but you know, it's like, come on. The, Vince McMahon is a great character. The evil Vince, Vince McMahon is one of the best of all time. But if he can't do the stuff everyone expects him to do, he shouldn't be on TV. Wow. Give the man a chance. I mean, at least we're talking about how oh, bad Raw was after it happened. You're talking about how bad it's going to be after before he even comes back. I didn't say it would be a bad Raw. Raw. I'm just yes, saying that's what I heard. everyone expecting Vince McMahon to be a physical threat, they're all going to be sadly mistaken. I'm looking, you know what, honest to God, I'm looking forward to seeing Vinnie Mac out on Raw next week because he will elevate everybody else's game. Everyone else is going to turn it up a notch because they know that all eyes are going to be on that show. Uh, what else happened on Raw tonight? Well, Sin Cara had a match against Unico, and another thing that irritated me, and maybe I'm just in a foul mood. I'm watching the Twitter feed and all the fans are like, oh, it's time for Botch Media. Oh, I wonder how many botches Sin Cara are going to have, blah, 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 blah. Um, Here's what I thought about, and Matthew, I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Does does, does Sin Cara, given his style, I, I'm sure you understand that they're not botches. It's just uh, the cost of doing business, I guess you'd call it. But his style in the ring and these botches everybody talks about, is it any more or than the botches we would see from a uh, Jeff Hardy or an RVD? You know, probably not, but with his style, with it being such a, for lack of a better term, a spotty style, it, it yeah. makes those botches look a little bit more a little bit more prevalent. And something that kind of gets me with this entire match, of course, it was the norm when he first premiered, but after he's come back from his injury, that gets a little old to me, and I can't quite put my finger on the reason why, but the Sin Cara lighting. It's like, are we are we ever supposed to believe that anybody stands a chance against Sin Cara as long as you've got the special Sin Cara lighting <laughs> on? You know, it's, it's like when Kane came at it, he had his own lighting. I don't think he lost a match during that era. Exactly, exactly. And we've seen Sin Cara in you know some pay per views with without the lighting, and like was it uh, Money in the Bank or some specialty matches like that? So we, we've seen him without the lighting now. It just seems like. A little bit much to go uh, to go back to the lighting, but just an- another one of those kind of nitpicky things on a on a rough raw to watch. You know, when people say botch fest, botch mania, botch whatever, five dollar wrestling, botch the whole thing. You know, when you're in a, if you watch sports in general, whether it be football, baseball, basketball, hockey, even soccer and 
boxing, people trip, they fall, they fumble the ball, they, there's an error, there's traveling, there's always a mistake. If you're in a fight, you're never going to have a perfect fight. Even in UFC, these guys trip and fall and stumble around. Just because it's predetermined doesn't mean it's like you're riding a car on rails where there's no, you know, uh, chance for error whatsoever. I mean, there, I, I honestly don't think, Damien, you and I sit back and say, wow. We may say, wow, he forgot a spot or he missed a spot, but you know it's really not intentional. I mean, there's so many things that go on in the ring in a match. You know, you got the referee with with uh, the earpiece. You got people barking out orders. Everything's timing. You know, it happens. But, you know, Sin Cara, he, obviously they believe in him. They know he's talented, and it may be because they're paying a lot of money. They're going to give the guy a push, and they're going to sell a ton of masks and a whole lot of merchandise. And you know what? Just <laughs> I know a guy that bought a mask. 60 bucks. Yeah. Out of time. yeah, you're talking to him. 60 bucks. The next day he gets suspended. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and and, and let, let me make this clear as well. This is not a defensive thing. Well, maybe it is a defensive thing, car, but I think if you step back and look at it, if you compare it to the RVDs and Jeff Hardy's of the world, uh, maybe it's more prominent. Maybe it's more, more RVD, more. if you want to get technical, has more botches in his match because he potatoes the hell out of guys than Sin Cara <laughs> does in his. <laughs> Let's I know certain talk. people. I know certain people call wrestling Rob Van Dam. It's like wrestling a Buick. He's just going to pound into you. A Luke Saber? Sure, absolutely. Not the convertible though. I don't care about Ryback. I know David Hero is on your team of Mighty Mouse Club members, but I just I I'm sorry. Something mm-hmm. is a, a miss there. It, it, and people have talked about, you know, the comparisons to Goldberg, the comparisons to RVD. But I, as a tweet came out tonight, I think it was from one of our followers, and I can't give the proper credit, I don't know who it was, but said, Ryback looks like he should be on something out of WCW in 1996. And that really... Oh, he's, he's a power kid. Yeah. He, yeah. Yeah, he is, absolutely. Big jacked up guy, going through killing people. Um is this deliberate? You know what? Opinion? I, you, you know, I, you got to wonder. I mean, are they trying to make fun of the whole TNA gut check by having enhancement talent come out and getting in the ring? I mean, and could they pick guys that look any less like pro wrestlers than the guys that they've been pulling out, totally right. bearing the indie scene? You know, there's some other bigger guys out there that have a far better look that, that they could be using. Yeah. But, hey, you know what? Speaking of, you know, Ryback, it made me think of Randy Orton. I get to pick somebody <laughs> up for him. Uh, yeah, you do, because he, as we talked about on primetime last week, and as many of you know, I'm sure, has been suspended. Is this his second or third suspension? There's some controversy it, surrounding Well, it's really like his uh, – he's had more than, I think, two, but they're only going to count two for the uh, wellness policy violations. Ah yes, true, true, true. Yeah, yeah that's so, true. Should, that's should, true. Should I pick up my per, my uh, my new? Well, I thought you did. I thought you s- picked up. I thought you picked up a tag team tonight. The uh, Ryback's opponents. I mean, they no, have a I talent. Not. No, they're not. They but they're not talent. signed. No, they're not. So you want me to do it tonight? You want me to wait for Saturday's prime time? Well, in in this in this world we live in today, I want you to tease it now, and then we'll deliver it on prime time. All right. Well, you know, like most of my picks, it's going to be brilliant. So I'll have somebody for Saturday. <laughs> yep. By the way, speaking of picks, Matthew Thomas, have you picked up your Nelson Family T-shirt yet at PWRShow.com? Oh. They're only $50, you know. I believe it's in the mail right now as we speak. It is uh, you, the recognized you, symbol of excellence in professional I, wrestling. I couldn't believe you did that. You know what? You just couldn't let the super fun I won. T-shirt. I won. I won. <laughs> So is that like and your wait, family crest on the shirt? Wait, what is that? Wait till, wait till you see. Wait till you see who's going to be wearing that shirt in the next couple of days. Ha! <laughs> It'll be all over, buddy. Back to WWE Raw, the matchup between CM Punk and Kane with involvement by Daniel Bryan and AJ. AJ's uh, she's um she's a busy little girl, isn't she? Uh, getting up in uh, Josh Matthews' space after the matchup, after he questioned her involvement, where she seemingly was trying to get a little bit of a uh, Action with Kane. 
Oh, AJ, she wants just, a big red machine. Come on. <laughs> you just gotta gotta hope this leads to like some type of Kane AJ storyline where he and tries to, to right? he tries to woo her and he's like all nervous and you know uncomfortable and everything. I think it's got potential. Oh, uh, there is no way Kane's gonna be nervous. He <laughs> nailed Katie Vick. Come on, AJ's gonna be a piece of cake. Don't we just have to go back to his story with Lita? Didn't Kane do that with Lita? You know what? Kane has right. been screwed over by more women than uh, the Secret Service. I mean, it's just like, wow. I mean, you had Tori, you had China, you had uh, Lita. I mean, yeah, he just doesn't get it. Uh, also on WWE Raw tonight, uh, the team of Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins go up against the tag team of uh, Kofi Kingston and R-True. Not a bad matchup, a match where, again, we, we were on a long streak of tag team wrestling. Uh, in the NWWE. Again, the other edge had to get some more TV time than the first edge had. Amazing. Curtis Hawkins <laughs> and Tyler Rex are actually a pretty solid young tag team. You know, they could yeah. give them a little more. And, you know, they actually had, you know, quite a bit of time tonight. It was solid, and I thought the finish was great. I thought the guys were there as far as their timing and everything. And if, if they can just build off of that, it's a good start to the new tag team division. And uh, we talked about the main event match uh, between John Cena and Michael Cole. Matthew, go ahead. If nothing else, you've got to give them credit. I mean, we're, what, probably three or four months now, it seems, where on every Raw, pretty much every SmackDown, you have the, at least the tag team champions making somewhat of an appearance, you know, whether it be on a match tonight or being thrown around by the big show last week. I mean, they're making in a point to – get the belts and get the tag team champions on TV on a weekly basis. So I got to give credit where credit's due. Absolutely. Hey, Christian and, tonight? Uh, well, I think he was on his own. I mean, no, no IC champ, no Santino. I mean, of course, he was beat up. Wow. You know what? We thought the talent roster was thin to begin with. It was really <laughs> depleted tonight. Yeah. Speaking of thin, we're running thin on time. We're actually 20 minutes over where we should have, where we planned to give a raw with no problem there. I want to make sure we maintain some time for some phone calls. So now let's go around the room and uh, pick up on the raw roundabout with the rest of the Pro Wrestling Report team. And we'll start with D. Wayne Williams, the co-host of Sudden Impact Radio Thursday nights right here on Blog Talk Radio after Impact. D. Wayne, your thoughts on WWE Raw tonight? Um, you, you know, I wasn't as hard on it as you guys were. Uh, but uh, it definitely could have been better. Uh, my question to you guys, with the big show, you remember this, the tone that you guys had very similar to where you were with Mark Henry. Is it possible that the big show could actually change your mind with a very good heel turn? Nope. Not for me, anyways. <laughs> Well, you know what it was? With with Mark Henry, he got decisive wins. I mean, when he picked up and body slammed and beat Big Show in Chicago at Money in the Bank, I was like, okay, I liked where that was going. And, he, you know, he didn't have other shenanigans. He was just beating people up. Big Show hasn't done that yet. Yeah, he's beaten up the lower mid-card kid-friendly baby faces. But he hasn't gone head on yet with John Cena and and, and beaten him. He will. And and there was no Hello? There was no uh heel turn either. And I think because, uh, you know, um Henry was already heel. He just became a better one. And maybe that's what's in the way of this whole big show thing is we got that pathetic heel turn, that obvious heel turn, and maybe that's what's clouding this whole thing. Don't know. Uh but um yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't talk about the big show anymore. All right, thank you, Dwayne. Let's move on now and talk to the hostess with the mostest, the lady who returned to primetime television last Thursday night. I'm sorry, last uh, Saturday night, and talking to the fans in the fan zone. Linda Kay, your thoughts on WWE Raw tonight? You know, at the start of tonight's Raw, I didn't think Michael Cole with his pants off and barbecue sauce would be a part of the night's show, but... Uh, I mean, it did give me a chuckle, but it did nothing to get me more invested in the Cena Big Show Johnny A storyline. And I just hope that next week's Go Home show will set a better tone going to No Way Out. And with Vinnie with Mac there, I'm hoping that that will be the case. 
But uh, one highlight of the night uh, for me was the progression of the punk Daniel Bryan AJ storyline. I'm liking what they're doing with AJ, building her character, and we saw that uh, with her interaction backstage with Josh Matthews. And I do see her playing a big role in the outcome of the punk Bryan match at No Way Out. <sighs> yeah. You know, Damien, you yeah. need a drink. You're just grumpy. You know, there's from Jameson, actually... Damien? Oh, well, there's actually Jameson waiting for me as soon as I'm done with this show. Um, How can you not be that happy? Is... you got a brand new T-shirt out. You know? I mean, you should be ecstatic that the powers that be in the PWR show agreed to put your whatever shirt you want to call that out, the Nelson Family Crest shirt. We'll be fine. I'm not worried. Let's uh, continue. Thank you, Linda. We'll see you Thursday at Karma in Milwaukee for the big PWR TNA Impact Live, uh, Impact Wrestling Live viewing party where the PWR cameras will be in place and several of you will have the opportunity to be a part of PWR Primetime Saturday night. And uh, now the man they call Meathead with your thoughts on WWE Raw tonight. Being the last one to speak and being the last one to give the opinion, I after listening to you guys bash and bash and bash, I wanted to be the opposite. And I've sat and listened and tried to think of something positive tonight. With the exception of being entertained by Ryback for two minutes, it was a chore. It was an absolute chore to watch. And I'm sorry to be that guy, to be you know the negative one, but I can't wait till Thursday for Impact because I know it will be a little bit more exciting. Regardless of whatever fails they have, it will be more exciting than that. Yeah. It was almost like a Christmas edition of Raw tonight. You know, you just sort of go out there and do it. Christmas would have had us. entertainment. You know, uh, the girls in, you know, dresses, food down the table, food fight. It would have been funny. Well, Raw tonight was funny for many reasons other than the ones it should have been funny for. But um, mm-hmm. thank you, Meathead. We'll talk to you on Thursday for Sudden Impact Radio. Remember, that time moved up one hour due to Impact's new time last week. Uh, and you can check that out right here on Blog Talk Radio. We're going to take a quick time out, and when we come back, we're going to give you guys the opportunity to tell us what you thought about Raw specifically. Why you thought Raw was good tonight? They're going to share their opinion with us, David Hero. Oh, there you go. That's better. Uh, We'll be right back after this brief time out here on the Pro Wrestling Report, Monday Night Meltdown. Monday Night Meltdown continues after this, live on Blog Talk Radio. There's only one place to get the latest from pro wrestling, including the only place to get 100% verified wrestling news. Watch or listen to all of our latest TV and radio broadcasts on demand and get caught up on wrestling news between episodes. PWRshow.com is the cleanest, friendliest, and most fan-friendly source for wrestling news on the web. The Monday Night Meltdown phone zone is now open. Give us a call live at 1-877-317-9772. And be sure to press 1 to get in where you fit in and be part of tonight's live show. We'll call on you by your area code. And when you hear it, tell us your name and where you're calling from. Then proceed with your question or comment. And welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report Monday Night Meltdown. Damian Nelson, David Hero, and Matthew Thomas here coming to you from the PWR Studios. And I uh, want to welcome everybody joining us in the chat room here on Blog Talk Radio. Some engaging discussion going on there. Also, I want to invite you to follow us on Twitter, at PWR Show on Twitter, and on Facebook, facebook.com slash PWR Show. Let's go to it now. It's time to go to the phones, and uh, we're going to first go to Bloomington and talk to Arthur. Arthur, share with us, please. Sorry about that, Meathead. Arthur, share with us, please, uh, why you thought Raw was a passing grade overall tonight. Michael Cole getting his ass kicked. Really? Oh, yeah. Really? After so many years of hearing his big mouth insulting everybody including John Cena, I was finally happy that he got what he was coming to him. Number two, this whole AJ thing, I don't care about the storyline. I just like the way that they are uh, portraying her as some psycho crazy uh, 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 um, 
female like how they did Mickey James years ago, but she's oh, doing it better than uh, Mickey James. And uh, finally, Mr. McMahon. This is the last chance that I want to see Johnny Ace finally get fired. Because after so many times I've been seeing bad news of uh, John Lennon or Nidus about to get fired and it don't, don't happen, this has to be the last chance of somebody finally giving Johnny Ace the axe. All right, Arthur, well, thank you very much for that call. Uh, I, I think I think that may be indicative of those who will be uh, considering Rob past tonight. But let's give Tony from Maryland a chance to share with us um, his thoughts on WWE Raw tonight. And, uh, Tony, it sounds like you also feel that Raw was a strong show. Hey, finally, I'm, I'm on with you guys. Uh, long-time listener, been listening to you guys for the uh, past two years, and I love the work that you do. Well, thank but, you so much. We appreciate it. And actually, I'm Infinity. Um, You're what? I thought, I thought Raw was a passing grade tonight. I saw so many Twitter feeds of people that were bashing it. And one thing that I think nobody really are talking about, if you go back to the Memorial episode of Raw and you compare it to what we saw tonight, it kind of plays into something that I was talking about many years ago since WWE is always 24-7. They like to sit up and say that they don't take any off-seasons, that they just keep going. And when you compare last week to this week, it was almost like Team A of Raw, the the the, the, the wrestlers of Raw last week, it's kind of like they were off tonight and Team B had to pick up the ball and they had to roll with it. Now, for those that were keeping track of the match, uh, all, all, of the, all the matches that were on air tonight, there was like seven matches total. You really don't count John Cena because he just basically went twice. The five matches were actually pretty good. I love seeing Kofi Kingston and R-Truth doing their thing. I also liked uh, seeing Ryback, even though it's starting to get a little bit played out with him taking on the created wrestlers from WWE 12. Um, you know, I, I still like seeing him in action. Overall, I thought it was pretty good. The only area that I thought was, okay, you kind of really didn't need to go that route was just the way that they went with Michael Cole. I, I think that it, you know, something that y'all pointed out earlier, it didn't need to end like that. It, it would have been better if it just ended with um, uh, CM Punk taking on Kane. Um, it really should end it like that it, because now it kind of really brings to to this question. I'll let you guys go. It brings to this question: What exactly is the value of the WWE Championship? I mean, this is a belt that has so much history, and we're seeing it being like it's starting to become a joke now. It's one thing when you sit up and say, "Okay, well, we have these important matches happening at a pay per view, so the WWE title it has to be pushed up. It's not going to close the show." But now there's sometimes where we're seeing CM Punk coming on right before 10 o'clock. He's not ending the show, or he's kicking off Raw, and now you got a play-by-play announcer ending the night. I just kind of question the true value of this WWE title. Uh, guys, keep up the great work. I love what you guys do. Thank you very much, Tony, from Maryland for that call. And, David, I know you've said it many a time, but uh, we've heard it from either – it was either Eric Bischoff or Vince Russo that refers to the title belts overall as props. Well, yeah, that's exactly what they are. I mean, you don't beat anybody. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're handed to you. It's a great way of, you know, drawing money and getting somebody over and giving somebody a push and being rewarded. But at the end of the day, it really is, you know, it's a prop. Yeah, you are being recognized as one of the tops in the business, but also, you know, you're also being recognized as, okay, hey, you know what, let's go in a certain direction with this guy. But, uh, I mean, right now you got the belts on Sheamus and CM Punk, and CM Punk says he's the best in the world, right? Uh-huh. Well, this, is no, this is no shot at CM Punk. This is a shot at, you know, the creative team in WWE. Then why isn't the best in the world main eventing your flagship show? And in reference to the WWE Championship closing a pay-per-view, um, from my best recollection, 
I think you've got to go back to TLC in December, the last time that closed the pay-per-view. I do not believe there has been a main event of any pay-per-view this year that has closed with either the WWE Championship or the World Heavyweight Championship. It's a damn shame. And I know that uh, the wrestling business has evolved, but that standard lasted for 100 years or whatever it might be. And now I don't blame Punk. I don't blame uh, Seamus, Brian, whoever. It's just uh, I, I'm not. Gonna, we're gonna look. We're, let's talk to uh, JD from Pittsburgh. It looks like JD also thought Raw was good tonight. So JD, please share with us why. Sure, guys. Um, I just want to say I'm, this is the first time I'm calling you guys, and hopefully I'll be calling you guys every week from now on, depending on what's going on with everything and anything. But, no, I mean, I'm glad tonight Michael Cole, like all the callers said, did get his ass kicked. He deserved it. I mean, he continues to be the annoying jackass heel that he is, and he's playing the character, obviously. But hopefully this will take him off television for because, I mean, there was talk for a while that they wanted to take him off TV and be a manager role, and then, of course, they kind of went back on their word with that. Um, as far as Vince coming back next week, I do hope they do fire John Laronitis. I mean, I think it's time for John Laronitis to stop being the anti-authority Vince McMahon character, and they got to get at least someone respectable that would at least be a solid GM, because right now, I mean, you look at the ratings, I mean, every week Laronitis saying, oh, it's about people power, and the ratings are because of me, and they're successful. No, they're not. The ratings are bad because they're doing the same thing that WCW did in its later years, and that's what's killing them. And talking about Randy Orton for just a minute, I don't know if you guys mentioned it earlier or not, but there was talk, apparently, there was a very heated temperament uh, meeting on Friday in Stanford, apparently, with Randy, Vince, Triple H, and Kevin Dunn. Now, they said apparently it was a hostile meeting, however. They're lobbying Randy for him to be released because of the lucrative contract with Randy that is signed until 2019. Now, the one thing I don't get is I understand Randy's suspended for 60 days, and he tested positive for Dynaball and also for marijuana. Now, the thing is, though, Cody Rhodes also, if you remember, there was reports on Russell's own, apparently was afraid that he would be suspended too. But why wasn't he suspended because of the whole thing, and Randy got the... Sh- shaft end of the stick. I mean, I understand Randy tested his tested twice, but why didn't Cody get fail, you know, failed well, that's test all, as well? Well, it's all speculation because no one has really confirmed it, but uh, part of the speculation was that Cody had prescriptions, if that was the case. Well, I, I think it's important to note, and J.D., thank you so much for that call. Great hearing from you, but I think it's important to note that, you know, that, that uh, how do I phrase this properly? It, it's only our business once WWE makes it public that there's been a suspension for a wellness policy violation. And some sites have chosen to report some some maybe truths, maybe not truths about others that were suspended. And let's say on this very show, we've had people come on and talk about some of the other times that some of the other talents, namely Randy Orton, have failed drug tests and have not been suspended. But the facts of the matter are, that if they're going to suspend a Randy Orton, if they're going to suspend a Rey Mysterio, if they're going to suspend a lot of these big names, they take it very seriously. And when they release that information is really all that should be treated as fact uh, from, from a public consumption standpoint because it, it's, it's, it's the same thing. I'm sure people are, are failing drug tests in, 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 in the major league sports as well on a regular basis and then so solving the matter before it becomes public by that league. So I would I would... I would stay away from reports of people failing or people uh, not meeting the qualifications of the wellness policy until WWE makes it official. Uh, I think, again, I would. I don't know if you disagree, Matt or David, but they uh, they take this very seriously, and they react to it given the suspensions they've levied out over the course of the last several years. Very seriously, because if you look at the people that they have suspended, it's been a lot of their top guys, guys that have been in big angles that they had, have had big plans with. And hey, you know what? Vince McMahon and company, they are the ones that have taken all the blame and all the heat whenever whenever a, one of their former stars dies of a drug overdose, whatever right. it may be. They're doing everything they can under their power to try to prevent that. They offer counseling. Yep. They have a very stringent uh, wellness policy test that, uh, I mean, hey, Rey Mysterio, Ron Killings, Evan Bourne, I mean, it's no joke. They're taken seriously. And let's not forget, they are a publicly traded company. So they have 
to do what's best for the shareholders. They're, they're doing the right thing, and you know what? If if, if Cody w- would have been suspended, I'm sure I would have been blamed for it. But you know what? Hashtag wasn't the save case. Cody. Well, and, and and maybe he was. So, um, but you know, at the end well, of the I made day, some phone calls. at the end of the day. WWE has shareholders to take care of. If there was a true wellness policy violation by anybody uh, that hasn't been suspended, maybe they will be. But as far as I know, it was just Randy Orton. Again, thank you for that call, JD. And we are out of time, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate all of you who did call in and who are waiting on hold. want to invite you to tune in to the Pro Wrestling Report primetime Wednesday night, our midweek edition of the Pro Wrestling Report where uh, you'll be able to see uh, several extensions or, or our extended conversations, if you will, with uh, what has gone on in the week of wrestling recently. So uh, that is that for the man they call Meathead, Liz Decay, Wayne Williams, Matthew Thomas, and David Hero. This is Damian Nelson saying thank you so much for tuning in here to the Pro Wrestling Report. Monday Night Meltdown, we'll see you Wednesday for primetime Wednesday night at pwrshow.com. So long, everybody. This is the Pro Wrestling Report. Informative. Entertaining. Real.